Hi guys, my name is Miss Emily and I'm a children's librarian at the Ashboro Public Library. Thank you guys for joining me for another Creative Writing Corner. This is going to be kind of a Creative Writing Corner Junior because we're going to be looking at parts of speech, which is something you might already be familiar with. So instead of looking at different literary devices, we're going to be looking at parts of speech. And parts of speech are really important because they are the different types of words that we have to use. And how we use those different types of words in a sentence affects uh, the style of writing that we have. Remember, words are the building blocks of all of our creative writing stories and poems. And it's just like when you're using Legos to build a building or a robot or a car. You need all of those individual blocks to make the whole thing. So now that you know what we're gonna be talking about today, do you know the different parts of speech? I'll give you a hint, there are eight of them. It's okay if you don't know them or if you need a bit of a reminder because we're going to be looking at those today. So the eight parts of speech we're going to be talking about today are nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, interjections, and conjunctions. So the first part of speech we're going to be talking about today is nouns. Nouns are probably one of the easiest ones for us to remember because they're the subjects of what we talk about. So they're a person, a place, a thing, or an idea. So an example of a noun would be um, a cat, a video game, a board game, a TV show that you like, um, or yourself, your mom, your dad, your brother, or your sister, or maybe your favorite actor or character in a book. Next, we're going to talk about pronouns. Pronouns are words that are used to replace a noun in a sentence. Think about when you're reading a book. It would seem kind of repetitive if every time the main character, let's call the main character John. So every time they're talking about John, they just say, John did this, John said that. Um, that can get kind of repetitive, and it's not really the way that we talk when we're speaking out loud, so it can also sound kind of weird when we're hearing it in our head. So a pronoun will take the place of our noun. Let's use John again as our noun. So we might say, instead of John did this, John said that, we already know we're talking about John, so we could say he did this, he said that. There's lots of different pronouns for different types of nouns. There's he, she, they, and it. And like I said before, this helps us from using the same noun over and over again, because that can get kind of tiresome to read. Next, let's talk about verbs. Verbs express action, but action doesn't just mean super exciting stuff or stuff that involves movement. Verbs can also refer to just thinking or being. It doesn't have to be some big exciting thing. It's just something that you or any other noun is doing. Now let's talk about adjectives. This is one of my favorite parts of speech because it's used to describe a noun. So we might say, John, our noun from before, is wearing a shirt. Shirt is another noun, but what do we know about that shirt? Well, we could say, John is wearing a soft shirt. And soft modifies not the noun John, but the noun shirt. So now we know that that shirt is soft because we use that adjective soft to modify or describe the noun that followed it. Adjectives can also be called descriptive words because they're what you're using to describe a noun. Similar to adjectives, we also have adverbs, but instead of adding on to a noun like adjectives do, adverbs add on to verbs. And luckily, adverbs has the word verbs in it to help you remember that they are adding to a verb. An example of an adverb could be the word quickly. John ran quickly towards the school. So without the adverb quickly, we might know that John is running, but maybe he's running kind of slowly, not super hurried. Uh, but when we add in the word quickly, we know that no, John is running quickly. He has to get to the school. Maybe he's running late for class or something. If you're having trouble telling an adjective from an adverb, remember that adverbs often end in the suffix ly. So adverbs, just like adjectives, modify. So adverbs modify a verb and adjectives modify a noun. And again, these are really great because they help us add a little bit of spice to our writing. The next part of speech we're going to be talking about is prepositions. Prepositions are words that are placed before a noun or a pronoun in a sentence. 
For example, you might say by that, with them, about us, or until tomorrow. In those examples, by, with, about, and until are the prepositions. Next, let's talk about conjunctions. Conjunctions are a part of speech that allow us to join different words and phrases together. These are words like and, but, so, or, and because. Conjunctions are really great because they let us create different kinds of sentences. Instead of just using a lot of short sentences, now we can add in long sentences. But we don't want to just use long sentences because that can get kind of hard to read. We want to have lots of different lengths of sentences in our stories. So conjunctions let us take what might be two short sentences and join them together with an and or a but. And then we have one longer sentence. Lastly, we're going to talk about the part of speech called interjection, which I'm going to admit before I was looking up the definitions of parts of speech, I only thought there were seven. I completely forgot about interjection. Interjection is a word that expresses some kind of emotion. So if you ever read about a character going, phew, or oh, or wow, those words are actually interjections because they're expressing how that character is feeling or dealing with a certain emotion. A lot of times these interjections will be followed by exclamation points. So as we've talked about a little bit before, uh, using these different parts of speech will help us create stories that are unique and creative, and they'll help you create your own style of storytelling. So to practice using these different parts of speech today, we're actually gonna play a game of Mad Libs with some of the library staff, as well as a few other people. Mad Libs are stories that have had a few words pulled out, leaving a blank space for you to fill in. Below that blank space, it tells you whether you should fill it in with a verb, an adjective, a noun, or some other kind of part of speech. Sometimes it'll get even more specific and it'll say, fill this in with an animal or fill this in with a piece of clothing just to make sure that the story makes sense. But a lot of times they'll leave it completely up to you. This is a great game to play with your family and with your friends. We're here with Miss Alexis, and I'm going to go ahead and ask Miss Alexis, could you please give us an adjective? Slippery. Slippery? All right, I'll go ahead and put that in. Now we've got Miss Becky, and we're gonna ask Miss Becky for a plural noun. Plural means that there's multiple or more than one. So it's just like a regular noun, but there's more than one of them. Miss Becky, can we have a plural noun? Hmm, books. Books, all right, I'll go ahead and put books in. All right, now we're here with Miss Sam. Hi, Miss Sam. Can you go ahead and give us a verb for our story? What is a verb, Emily? A verb is an action. So it's something that a noun is doing. Ooh, hop. Hop, all right, we'll put hop in our story and we'll see where that goes. Hi, everybody, I'm here with Mr. Harris. And so we're gonna see how Mr. Harris can help us with our story. Mr. Harris, can we have a noun, please? Rabbit. Rabbit? All right, we're gonna pop that in our story and see how it goes. I'm here with Miss Jessie now, and Miss Jessie is gonna help us out with our story. Miss Jessie, can I have an adverb? Quickly. Quickly, all right. Let's see how that's gonna go in our story. All right, guys, I'm here with Miss Savvy, and Miss Savvy is gonna help us with our story. So Miss Savvy, could we have a verb ending in I-N-G? Uh, running. Running? All right, we're gonna see how that works in our story. Thanks, Miss Abby. All right, let's move on to our next word. We're gonna go ahead and ask for a piece of clothing. Do you have a piece of clothing that can go on our story? Uh, a hat. A hat? All right, let's see how that works in our story. And we are here with Mr. Naruto. Mr. Naruto, can you give us a verb? Okay, sniff is a verb to sniff. Sniffing? Yeah. Sniffing is a verb. Thank you, Mr. Naruto. We'll see how that fits in our story. Wow, those were a lot of great answers. 
Now, there were a few nouns that we had left over after we played, and I didn't want to give some people a chance to do a second one and not others because I didn't think that was fair. So I went ahead and I messaged a few of my friends and they went ahead and gave me some nouns to fill in in the leftover noun spaces. On our Facebook page, we also had a post where people could leave their suggestions for adjectives and nouns below. And we got a great adjective selection, oh, and we got a great adjective from Jem on our Facebook and that adjective was snowy. So we're gonna go ahead and put snowy into our Mad Libs. The nouns that my friends gave me to fill in that we haven't already seen were cars, school, bike, and house. So now that we have our Mad Lib filled out, I'm gonna go ahead and read the story out loud to you. I have a feeling this one's gonna be really funny, you guys. So the story is called Winter Downhill Fun. Winter sports are so slippery. There's skiing where you put two books on your feet and hop down a steep rabbit really quickly. You can also do cross country running or snow hat if you don't live near steep cars. Snowboarding is similar, but you stand on one school and sniff downhill. Another fun downhill sport is sledding or tubing where you ride a snowy bike or an air-filled house downhill. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think any of those winter sports sound quite right. But it was pretty fun to play, and I'm gonna go ahead and share it with all of my friends that helped me out. If you wanna play Mad Libs with your own family, I'll actually leave a link in the description to where you can download PDFs of a bunch of fun winter or holiday-themed Mad Libs. So go ahead and check that out. Thank you guys for learning about the different parts of speech with me today. I had a lot of fun and I thought it was a really good refresher for my own writing. But before we go, we still have to put our new ornament on our poetry for this month. And we also have to pull our creative writing prompt for the next month. All right guys, for this month's poetry ornament, I have a little snowflake now that it's winter time. Are you guys looking forward to getting snow? I know I am. So let's go ahead and pop this on our tree. Alrighty, that looks great. Now let's do our writing prompt for the upcoming month. So let's go ahead, shake our jar. No peeking. And our creative writing prompt for this month is, ooh, this one's a good one, you guys. If you were on a spaceship, what would you be most excited about seeing? And remember you guys, if you ever follow any of these writing prompts or have a different creative writing project you'd like to share, you can go ahead and email me at the Ashboro Children's Room at gmail.com email and just let me know if that's just for me to read or if you'd like to share it with the rest of our friends in the Creative Writing Corner community. Uh, we actually had a great short story submission by Lizzie Garrett that you can find on our webpage under the Children's tab and then under the Virtual Programs tab if you'd like to see what some of our friends in the community are doing. It was a really great story. I really enjoyed reading it. Also, I wanted to remind you guys that we have some cool little journals that you can get through the Children's Room at the Ashboro Public Library. If you're interested in picking that up, we can set up a curbside pickup date for you. You just have to call 336-318. 6804 and let us know that you want to get a creative writing journal. These are nice and small so you can carry them on the go and whenever you have one of those great creative writing ideas you can go ahead and jot it down so you don't lose it. It also comes with these nifty little stickers so you can go ahead and show your creative writing pride. Thank you guys for joining me for another creative writing corner. I hope you guys have a great rest of the year and I'll see you guys next month in January. Bye guys!